Okay, so I had just finished sewing a little blue linga for my baby niece and wanted a pattern to follow for my next project because honestly, I just didn't want to think as hard again. So I knew I wanted a pattern and I knew I wanted to use this five yards of black cotton bubble gauze I'd gotten off eBay secondhand. And because Halloween was coming up and the fabric was black, I thought it would be fun to do something witchy, but wearable. I was thinking something with a high neck, long sleeves, a flowy skirt. Enter the Yarrow dress from Mood Society. I liked the pattern for the most part, though it wasn't exactly what I wanted. But you know, it was free. So, I'll make it work. <laughs> That's what I thought. But I did decide to make adjustments to the existing pattern, mainly the sleeves and skirt. Though I did also end up having to change the collar later. I wanted a looser sleeve with a cuff instead of a fitted sleeve with a ruffle, and I also wanted a longer skirt. Basically, I wanted to take the dress from spring to witchy winter in order to match my mood. <laughs> Nailed it. Alright, first things first, I printed out the PDF pattern after downloading it from Mood's website. And let me tell you, it was thick with all the C's. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, I was intimidated, but I didn't let it stop me. I had a grand plan to finish this dress in a day just in time for Halloween. That's correct, you heard me right. I, who had never even made a dress for myself, thought I could put together the PDF pattern, cut it out, make the adjustments I wanted to it, and sew it all up in one day. One day! Spoiler alert, that did not happen. Like, really didn't happen. I finished in December, and I'm editing this in March. Anyway, I took the whole afternoon and night to just tape the pattern together and cut it out. Oh my gosh. I laid this all out on the bed. It's like fully over the whole queen size bed. <laughs> and over this rug in the corner. All right, stuff came up, so now it's almost seven o'clock and I'm not anywhere near done even taping. So what I'm doing now is taping and highlighting what I need to cut out. So I think what I'm gonna do is like cut out what I have done here and then I have more space to pull things up like from the ground <laughs> to onto the bed so I can tape some more and keep cutting. It's like 11.30 at night now break for dinner, etc. So I'm a lot closer though. So I'm just gonna keep going. Naively, I thought I could still finish the next day. Well, the next day came and I did some quick calculations to figure out how much length to add to the top and bottom skirt pieces, making templates to measure out the extra I needed to add. Okay, I just measured the skirt top and the skirt bottom pieces, so this is like the gathered bit at the bottom. And I did some wrong math, and then did some right math, I think. So I figured I wanted to add about 13 inches to the length. And so I figured out what the length is now with the top and bottom attached. And decided I wanted to add 13 inches, so that's the length I want. There's also seam allowance in here, so... I made it longer on purpose because I figured I could fiddle with it if needed. Anyway, it, we'll see how it cuts on the fabric too because I haven't laid everything out yet to see like what I could do because this bottom piece is longer. So if I end up having not enough fabric, I'm going to have to do less of this and more of this, I think. Or I can just attach pieces of this, I'm not sure. <laughs> so then I figured out what the ratio was of the ruffle length to the top length because I don't really know like how I should change this. I figured I should just keep the same proportions and maybe, maybe that'll work out. So I figured that out, that for the new length, the ruffle portion should be about 13 inches. And then I just subtracted that from the original one. I'm like, okay, I need to add four and a half inches to that. And then just subtracted that from the new length. Um, the total of the bottom ruffle, and that ends up being around 24 inches, so that means I need to add about 8.5 inches. Measured out 4.5 inches for the skirt bottom, and then here's, I'm just going to use this 
other one that was like a French curve that I didn't end up using. You know what I really had this like? These are all just rectangular pieces, so I didn't really have to like... If I have just given measurements for them, it would have taken a lot of piece of paper rather than just having them in the pattern like this. And even right now, I was thinking of like, oh, okay, let me attach all this stuff on there, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to lay those out, and then I'll just use this as a guide. Then I figure out roughly the best way to put the pattern pieces on the fabric to hopefully cut the whole pattern out with what I had. I cut out the bodice front, back, and collar first. By the way, I cut all the pieces from the fabric on the bed because it was the biggest flat surface I had. That was definitely a mistake. It made the process a hundred times harder because the first the surface was so soft and the fabric itself already wanted to stretch and wiggle at every opportunity. My stubbornness got me through, but even it was wearing thin towards the end. Anyway, I had to go back and make sure I got all the notches and markings on the bodice pieces. Once those were done, I folded the fabric the other way to fit the skirt pieces using the guides I made to add length. There was no point in wasting more paper by adding it to the pattern when I could just measure out how much I needed to add and mark it with chalk. I did the sleeves last because I figured if I didn't have the fabric I needed for exactly what I wanted, I could just adjust them to fit. I pulled out a sleeve pattern and got it on sale at Joann's thinking I would just use that. Like something like D-ish, you know? a little bit extra full at the bottom like a cuff or something but I opened it up I've never used like this kind of pattern before <laughs> um, and I was like oh my goodness I don't know if I want to deal with this right now so what I might do instead is just add some more on each side of the cuff here and figure out how to do a cuff <laughs> so I ended up nixing that plan not just because I didn't want to deal with another pattern, but also because I was worried about how it would fit with the existing bodice pattern. So I ended up just pulling out a dress I had and taking its cuff measurements. And made this like really simple pattern piece. So here's how it looks finished. I just added half an inch and tried to cut it on the fold. It was pretty simple to draft that pattern since they were essentially just rectangles as far as I could tell. They worked out okay so I guess I was right. The pattern pieces ended up being about 10 inches by 4 inches cut on the fold. To adjust the width of the sleeve pattern, I just doubled the cuff length I'd measured and added seam allowance. I added half an inch when I should have added an inch I think um, to be exact here. But it didn't need to be so specific since I was just going to gather it down to the cuff length anyway. The final width I needed the bottom of the sleeve to be was about 18 and a half inches, so it could be gathered nicely, I hoped. Laying the sleeve pattern down on the fabric, I measured about nine and a quarter inches from the center point out on both sides to make sure it was even, marking the new pattern line with chalk. I connected the bottom corners of the sleeves to the corners before the pattern curved for the arm thigh. I reused the skirt template to make the cuff pattern, just folding it to the right size of rectangle, again to conserve paper. Then I cut out the sleeves, neck ruffle, and cuffs at 7 p.m. on Halloween night. Why did I think I could finish this in time again? In the words of Leslie Nope, you beautiful, naive, sophisticated newborn baby. Anyway, I was so happy I was able to fit all the pattern pieces on the fabric. Or so I thought. <laughs> More on that later. I was also happy I was able to cut all the pieces so I had the stretchy direction of the fabric going horizontally, not vertically. I mean, I don't think I'm going to be growing vertically anymore in my 30s, but horizontally is still very much in play. <laughs> Everything is cut, <laughs> finally. <laughs> By that point, I'd also finally accepted that I wasn't going to finish in Halloween. Clean this up, and then we're going to celebrate Halloween with wings and drag me to hell because my brother recommended it. So, done for today. I have been defeated. My goal of finishing it by Halloween, <laughs> but that's okay.
<laughs> I hope it just comes out wearable. If anyone actually ends up watching this, I'd love some horror movie recommendations. I love watching them even though I'm definitely a bona fide chicken at heart. <laughs> The urgency of my self-imposed deadline behind me, I took my time with the rest of the dress. AKA, I procrastinated whenever and wherever I could. But I did get back to it eventually, starting with the bodice. I marked the darts, pinned them, and sewed them, following the directions. The first step is to close the dart, and I realized I didn't even read what these triangles were for, and it's for the dart. So this must be the apex, so I'm gonna mark this and close that dart. Okay, pinned the darts. To be honest, I followed directions more carefully towards the beginning and then kind of winged it later. Mostly out of laziness, really. I didn't want to look them up as I went along. It was a simple enough dress, so I think it was fine. All right, ironed. Looking pretty good. Next, I added a basting stitch to gather the neckline later. I thought about adding a zigzag stitch around the perimeter of the pieces to prevent fraying, but the machine kind of chewed the fabric a bit near the edge, so I decided not to do that. It must have just been too delicate for it. Because of that, I thought about doing French seams, but then I was worried about needing to do alterations, so I decided against that. I didn't think the fabric would take well to seam ripping and re-sewing if I had to do that. So, I pinned the sides and shoulders of the front and back bodice pieces together and sewed them. And proceeded to accidentally sew the seam on the wrong side. Okay, well I was like, oh good, I got the shoulder seams done, and I got the side seams done. And I was staring at it and I was like, wait a minute. Oh no. <laughs> I saw the seams on the outs like on the wrong side. <laughs> Cause here are the darts and this is the wrong side of the darts. Oh god. I do not want to unpick this, you know? <laughs> so I ended up just doing French seams anyway. I cut the excess seam allowance, ironed it, and pinned it in the other direction to sew it down, using a quarter inch seam allowance in case it might make the bodice too tight. Then I ironed the seams again before moving on to the collar. I used muslin scraps for any parts calling for interfacing because I didn't have interfacing and I didn't want to buy it. Would it have been better if it was black instead of white? Sure, but it didn't really matter much in the end. And at least that part worked. The collar itself turned out to be somewhat of a nightmare for me. Anyway, I pinned the muslin to one of the collar pieces and sewed it together with a quarter inch seam allowance so I could treat it like one piece. Then I moved on to the ruffle. The pattern piece for this was actually really long, which maybe should have been a bit of a warning sign. I folded it in half and ironed it down before basting the bottom to gather it. The edges were kind of uneven because it kept shifting when I was cutting it, so I used a slightly larger seam allowance to compensate for that. It took some time to gather up that long ruffle to the size of the collar, and when I did, it was pretty thick. And I wasn't even using a thick fabric. It probably would have been better if it was shorter and not folded in half, just hemmed. In any case, it looked too bulky to me at this point, but the final result looked good in the picture so I kept going. I sewed the gathered ruffle down to one collar piece and folded the ends of the ruffle in and sewed them also to finish the edges. Then I sandwiched the ruffle between the collar pieces and sewed it up. I did have to trim off the sides of the ruffle to keep the seam allowance clear. Then I clipped the corners and the excess fabric before turning it right side out. Adjusting the gathering on the bodice neckline to fit, I pinned the collar on. I decided to hand baste the collar on here because it was difficult to maneuver under the machine with the pins in. 
I see people handling these porcupine leg pieces like it's no problem, but I prick myself too much. And I really don't like living life on the edge. <laughs> So, after it was basted and safe, I sewed the collar to the bodice by machine. I didn't sew down the inside, figuring I should wait to try it on first to make sure I liked it. And good call me. The ruffle was way too thick when I tried it on, flaring out really strangely. I looked like an old timey clown. So I shortened the ruffle by turning the collar inside out and just adding another line of stitching about a quarter inch deeper, which shortened both the mock neck and the ruffle in one go. I clipped the corners and the seam allowance again before turning it right side out. Again. but I still didn't like it. At this point, I felt like I'd been staring at it too long and decided to just set it aside and think about what I wanted to do with it later when I had some distance. I glanced at the directions again after I moved on from the collar and they didn't make sense to me. It took me a few seconds before I realized that that was because I had made a mistake earlier I'd only cut out one of each of the skirt pieces when I should have cut out two of each of the skirt pieces. Which I would have known if I had just read the pattern pieces. This is why you shouldn't cut fabric when you're tired. Unfortunately, this was a mistake I couldn't fix because I only had scrappy pieces left. So I had to make do with what I had. I measured the skirt pieces and figured I still had enough that I would have some gather when trying to match it to my waist measurement. So there should be two of these, like two lengths of this. Uh, all the back is supposed to be not cut on the fold, so it's supposed to have a split. And then two of these. And I have one and one. <laughs> That's all the fabric I have like to cut out that big of a piece. So. I just I measured my waist again. Right now it's 28.5. So if I add an inch of ease, and then I remember that the seam in the back too. So and there's some zipper in there, so I just like to be safe. Added 1.5 inches um, seam and zipper, and so that'll end up being 31 inches. Is how much I need the fabric to be gathered down to for the skirt top. And once I gather that down, then I can just gather the bottom down to however long it needs to be to attach to that. So it's not going to be as gathered as it should have been because there's less fabric. Also, I think it should be okay. Hopefully. I didn't know if it would look good, but I was committed now, so I forged forward. But not with the skirt, at least not right away. I moved on to the sleeves first because I realized they would be more difficult to sew onto the bodice if the skirt was attached to the bodice first. There would just be a whole lot more dress I would have to maneuver around if I went in that order. First, I sewed a basting stitch to the top curves and the bottoms of the sleeves together later. Then I moved on to the cuffs, figuring it would be easier to attach them before I attached the sleeves to the bodice. I cut muslin to interface them as well, pinning the rectangles to the cuff pieces before sewing up the sides. Then I trimmed the seam allowance and turned them right side out, poking out the corners. Inside out. I'm gonna use a little pencil to cut out these corners. Corner. 
Oh man, maybe that's the way to do corners and stuff. Just to have it on a fold, because then you don't have to do an angle inside. It's pretty sharp. With the cuffs prepped, I pinned the sleeve seams and sewed them, being sure to leave the bottom 3 inches open to get the sleeve on and off. Then I ironed the seam open along with the 3 inches at the end. Tucking in the raw edges of the section left open, I sewed them down, finishing the slits. After gathering the sleeves to fit the cuff length, I pinned them together. I again basted this by hand to avoid handling another porcupine at the machine. I sewed the basted seam at the machine, realized the bobbin died. Rewound the bobbin. Okay, try to. <laughs> uh. And sewed the cuffs again. With the front secured, I folded and pinned the inside edge of the cuff to cover the raw edge and sewed it down by hand. Here I took a moment to pat myself on the back as I admired the cuffs. Then I thought I should move on to the buttons, but then I realized I only had white buttons and I wasn't exactly sure where to place the buttons yet, so I kicked that decision downstream. I decided to attach the sleeves to the bodice next instead. I gathered up the top of the sleeves and pinned one to the bodice. I once again basted it on by hand before sewing by machine because porcupine. I accidentally sewed one section down with a wrinkle so I had to unpick that part and re-sew it. Then I tried on the bodice to see how it looked so far. The shoulder is definitely too long here and even if it was at the right size, I don't know. I don't know if I love this puff. I don't think it's the most flattering. And like, I don't think I like the ruffle either. Like, and both together is kind of, I'm sure, it's kind of a lot. <laughs> the shoulder was too long. Like the sleeve puff was sitting oddly and maybe was a bit too big on me. And I still didn't really like the ruffle at the collar either. So it was just kind of unflattering all around. Um, this is also where I had to pause for a bit because the roof started leaking right next to the sewing machine. So that was great. Uh, but the problem was addressed pretty quickly, so there was that at least. The first order of business once my sewing area was open again was to seam rip out the ruffle in the collar. I was done making excuses for it. It was never going to change. I had to move on with my life. Once it was gone, I sewed the collar back together as a plain mock neck. Much better. I tried it on again, this time asking my husband to clip me into the bodice so I could get a better idea of what I wanted to change. Measuring while it was on, I estimated I needed to take the shoulders in roughly 2 inches. As for the two puffy puffs, I really didn't want to have to seam rip the sleeve, fix at the shoulder, and then reset it. So I tried a faster and lazier way, crossing my fingers and praying to the sewing gods that this would work. Taking the dress off, I used chalk to mark two inches in from the edge of the shoulder. Then I used a printed out French curve to draw a curved line from that mark to the existing sleeve seam. I'll see if I can find where I printed that French curve from. Marking the length I drew on the French curve itself to have a guide, I marked the same line on the other side of the bodice. Tucking the sleeve in, I hand basted the new seam line and tried the bodice on once more. And it looked great. Victory was mine! <laughs>
After I stopped celebrating, I attached the other sleeve with the regular half inch seam allowance before making the same adjustments as the other sleeve, just to be sure it would turn out the same. Then I sewed the sleeves on by machine along the new curve using a clear zipper foot so I could see the line I'd drawn on more easily. I left the excess fabric at the shoulder in case I found I needed to make any more adjustments later. And then it was time for the skirt. I sewed a basting stitch at the top of the skirt and pulled it in together. I thought I might use bias tape somewhere but it was too stiff for the fabric I was using so I nixed that idea. But I did find this cool coupon in the old one I bought secondhand. I was tempted to send it in for the book of trims advertised, but alas, I knew I'd likely be sending it in to be lost in the ether. So after admiring it, I pinned the skirt top to the bodice and sewed it on. I'd also realized at this point that the dress might actually be big enough on me to avoid a zipper and make a tie instead. I thought about fitting it, but being able to pull it on sounded nice. I tried it on again to check, but realized the waist was also too low, even with a tie. I'd followed the sizing chart for the pattern, but the pattern was clearly just too big for me all around. Anyway, I thought it would look better with a waistband, but now that I had the idea to make a tie, I wanted to conserve the fabric I had for that purpose later. So I had the idea to make a faux waistband by just folding the fabric at the waist. I really wouldn't recommend this, but it is what I did. I pinned it and tried it on. It looked good enough to me, so I made sure it overlapped the raw edge inside and ironed it down. I took out the pins here and replaced them with clips to make it easier to handle. Then I sewed it down in the ditch. At this point, I realized the waistband was actually higher than my natural waist, but I decided to just go with it since it was becoming a more flowy dress anyway. I stitched the top of the waistband down by hand to hide the stitches. The waistband itself didn't look perfect, but I figured it wasn't going to matter all that much since it was black on black. Then I jumped back to the sleeves, cutting off the excess at the sleeve caps, finally committing to that alteration. This is where I tried rayon binding to finish the seam, but ended up ripping it off because it was just too stiff. Instead, I tucked the seam into itself and sewed it down to finish. I don't know if this is an actual method, but I tried it. There were a couple of sections I couldn't close. I couldn't. There were a couple of sections I couldn't sew close enough with the machine to keep it tucked in, so I ended up whip stitching the seams by hand as well. Then I moved on to the skirt. Thinking the skirt would be easier to hem before it was attached to the rest of the dress, I folded in the bottom of the bottom skirt piece, ironed it, and sewed it before repeating it again to finish it. I did sew the second fold by hand to avoid a visible stitch line. Also, I should have just done the first turn in here and left the second for later. After the back seam of the dress was finished, it would have had a cleaner look. This way it worked out okay, but it would have looked a little better had I waited on that second fold. Then I put in a basting stitch and gathered the bottom skirt panel. Pinning it to the top skirt panel, I French seamed them together. After that, I pinned the back of the dress together, doing my best to match the hem. I realized here what I should have done at this point, but I was not about to seam rip my hand stitching. It was staying. I'd make it work. I put two pins in about six inches from the collar, to keep that section free in order to get the dress on and off my head. Then I sewed up the back seam, wrong sides together, trimmed the seam, ironed it, and turned it inside out to pin it and sew again into a French seam.
With the back seam done, I moved on to finish the opening under the collar, folding it and pinning it before sewing it down. At this point, the collar was uneven with one side flush with the opening and the other overhanging. So I turned the collar inside out and put a basting stitch in to see where I should sew it. It looked good, so I sewed it down to be flush, trimmed it, and turned it back over. I'm really glad I kept the collar open on the inside this whole time, or it would definitely have been a chewed up mess by this point. I also took the time to understitch the top seam so it would turn in neatly. Then I finally pinned the back of the collar down and sewed it, using the machine to stitch in the ditch and some hand sewing around the edges by the back seam. I tried it on again, clipping the cuffs and collar shut to check the fit. The collar was still too big. It needed to overlap in the back to fit my neck, but that messed up the drape in the back. So I did the quick and dirty fix of folding in the edges in the back and sewing it down, but then it was too tight. <laughs> So I seam ripped it and hand sewed it again at an angle with more folded in at the top where my neck is thinner. That worked. It wasn't the prettiest finish, but it worked and it was sturdy. I needed to sew the hooks and eyes on next. I was trying to like bust through the little packaging in the back, like all the doing stuff, and I didn't realize there's a little cute container in here to hold it together. A giant crack in it. Uh. Mm, it's not pretty, but it's getting the job done. But I was cold and didn't want to do it, so I moved the operation to the bed. I sewed on three sets while watching YouTube, and then the collar was finally done. Thank God. I think the collar took the most time out of anything in this whole dress and thank goodness it was finished. But I had to fix the slit under the collar now because it was sitting oddly. I folded it in again, pinned it and hand sewed it down. The fold was deeper at the top than near the point at the bottom in order to be flush with the collar. That done, I drew a chalk line where the cuffs overlapped when clipped shut in order to have a guide for button placement. I'm glad I did because they fit best when overlapped at an angle. I did decide to just use snap buttons because I didn't have any black buttons. I just eyeballed the spacing and sewed them on by hand. Worked great. And the dress was done. I was elated until I remembered I also wanted to make a tie. So I moved on to the tie. I went through the scraps left and cut out some long rectangles. I didn't measure here, just eyeballed it. Then I sewed them into one long strip, ironed the seams, folded the strip in half, and ironed it again, then pinned it. I chalk marked the ends at an angle because I thought it would just look prettier with pointed ends, like a ribbon. Then I sewed it, trimmed the seam allowance, and turned it right side out pulling out the corners with a pin. I ironed it once more, making sure to iron the opening in before hand sewing it shut. I measured it here. It ended up being about 70 inches long, long enough to tie into a bow if I wanted to. And then I was really done. In December. Just uh, two months late. <laughs> I tried to figure out the best way to shoot the dress outside, inside with a lamp, inside with daylight. It was hard to show the details because it's all black. But the all black color is also the reason why the tie can work with the dress at all. Because the waistband ended up above my natural waist, but the tie sits at my waist, you can see the waistband and the gathered part of the skirt above the tie. But I had to get the lighting right to show it due to how dark it is. It isn't actually all that noticeable in person because the dress is basically a black hole. I really like it without the tie too. It's comfy, loose, and flowy, but not shapeless. 
I actually might like it better without the tie, to be honest, so I'm glad I opted not to fit the dress and put in a zipper. So this way I can wear it both ways. But loose is just easier to throw on, get on my broom, and fly through that clear night sky, you know? Wait, now I'll, you stay there and I'm going to walk back. You got me the shot? Mm-hmm. Good? Mm-hmm. All right, picture? Do some more things real quick. Okay. 